She bit, she scratched, she almost killed our dog. Sharon Barons had cared for now, many foster children, but the little girl named Mia, who'd been brutally abused by her parents, was unlike any other. In a 24-hour period of time, she could scream as much as 12 hours. Uh, when she wasn't screaming, uh, she growled, and it was like an animal. Mia would scratch and cut herself. She'd spend much of the night crying. The level of terror when the pediatrician saw her, the neurologist saw her, everyone said, what in the world happened to this child? The abuse was ritualistic, satanic in, in some way. Tom Snyder is the deputy DA in Kings County, California, and knows well what happened to Mia when she was less than a year old. She was an infant, uh, but she was grievously sexually abused in ways that I think for the average uh, individual are, would be uncomprehensible. 3,300,000 reports of child abuse are made every year in the United States. And more than 80% of abused children carry lasting scars as an adult, suffering from depression, anxiety, and eating disorders. Mia's abuse was discovered after her father killed her baby sister. Mia had been abused since she was born. She drew biting monsters. She drew naked women lying in pools of blood. The most ghastly pictures you can imagine a three and a half year old drawing. So Child psychiatrist Lenore Terre says Mia was unable to trust anyone. I felt that I couldn't teach her anything else until I could get her to feel safe in the world. Kids like Mia are sometimes called throwaways, too damaged to recover. I would wake up every morning, because I would have been up half the night with her, and I would say, oh, I'm keeping her till noon. And then I'm calling, and she's a goner. I can't do this. But Sharon and Bob Barons didn't throw Mia away. They adopted her. This is my door sign that says danger, teenage girl inside. After years of treatment for wounds, both mental and physical, there's a different so Mia. Like really awesome. They thought I would never be able to socialize. They thought I would never be able to talk with people. I would be like in an animal state, like growling, biting, scratching, hitting, screaming, and stuff. But you're not. Nope. I'm uh, walking on Earth like every other human. <laughs> an important part of Mia's long recovery came when she was just four and visited the grave of her baby sister, Samantha whose death at her father's hands brought Mia to the attention of child welfare workers. Did you make her a promise? Um, I told her that I'd see her in heaven someday. She went to the baby's grave and spoke to the baby. Nobody told her to do this. And she says to the baby, you died and I got to live. It was an incredible moment in which this child realized that she had gotten to survive for a purpose. I am definitely still a work in progress. Now, Mia has started telling her story of survival publicly to help those considered throwaways. Some people look at those kids like, oh, they're just going to grow up to be like crazy and in mental hospitals. That's not true because every kid in the world is important. She feels free to speak out because her birth father is serving a long prison sentence. She's lost track of her birth mother. Bob Barons credits three women for Mia's recovery. Wife Sharon for her commitment, Dr. Tear for her insights, and Mia for her will to survive. Those who supported Mia through all the years of struggle got a huge reward last June when she graduated from high school. She was a baby when she came, and now she's a, a young woman, you know, with her whole life in front of her, you know, with lots of adventures. and. Kalea it's just, Zulina. it's been quite a ride. I get paid to use words. I'm at a loss for words to describe Mia. She's that phenomenal. The girl who once feared everyone is now surrounded by friends. At college, her goal is to become a kindergarten teacher. So why be a kindergarten teacher? I love children and, you know, like taking time and patience and 
learning about them. They're really interesting. <laughs> the girl who once growled and bit can now hardly keep from smiling about her future. John Blackstone, CBS News in California's Central Valley.